It's a box. But it's a box that contains something fun. All right, let's get to opening up this thing. Hey, okay, so here you go. We got the uh, little box out of the big box. And what you're seeing here is the Ubiquiti Edge Router X. It's a five port router. It's got PoE capability, uh, gigabit ports, and uh, is supposed to be able to deal with my little buffer bloat problem, which is a common problem among people with DSL connections. Uh, I have a very bad uh, buffer bloat problem. I've got up to, I've seen up to 500 milliseconds uh, delay of buffer bloat, which is just kills things like live streams or even downloading, uh, you know, large large files, gigabit, uh, gigabyte in size or more, that kind of thing. Uh, also impacts my line speed. So uh, what I've done is I did a little research and found out that there was really two routers on the market that uh, could deal with the buffer bloat problem using something called SQM. And SQM alleviates buffer bloat uh, really just by clearing out the buffers a little faster and not, allow, not allowing that latency to build up. Now, uh, this router is about 45 bucks, 45 to 50 bucks. No matter you found it, I got it for 45 on eBay with free shipping. And uh, this and the other router, the IQ router, which is about 150 bucks, are the only two that claim to have any functionality to deal with it with buffer bloat using SQM. Uh, but what does 45 bucks get you? Well, it gets you this router. Let's go ahead and open up the box. See what we got. First thing you see is you get a little instruction book. Tell you some basic stuff about how to set up the router, what to do with it. And then you get the router itself. Take this out. There you go. See, a nice metal case, vents on the side here, um, and then you got a little 12 volt wall wart right there. Let's see, so uh, it's a five port router, but you're going to use one of those ports for uh, your WAN port, of course. Of course, you can set any port you want to be the WAN, that's one of the things. This is a very configurable router. In fact, that's, it's both a plus and a negative because uh, unlike most consumer routers, um, you're not going to get much out of it if you don't dig into the nitty-gritty details, kind of like Cisco equipment. Um, so if you're not an IT pro, this might be a little more of a challenge for you to get set up to handle your problems. But you can see it has PoE, and as such, it's got, uh, well... It has PoE, but people have complained about it not really being very strong, and I'm not surprised considering how small this router is and only 12 volts. Um, this is a powered PoE out port, and here's a, and the, the front is a powered PoE port, which means um, if you're going to power this router with PoE, you're going to plug it into the first port here, which you can do. Uh, it's only a 12 volt uh, power requirement. But then you're basically going to be down to three ports, not counting whatever you use for your WAN. Now, I don't care about PoE. I've never trusted it, mostly because most people's wiring isn't uh, up to snuff to be able to really handle it well. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, you're going to have about four usable ports, and you can assign any of them to be whatever you want them to be. Um, it has... Uh, a little, uh, if you need to put a little ground screw in, ground wire, there it is right there, reset button right here. Uh, and it's powered after 12 volt DC in, which is, there's the little 12 volt wall wart in the box there. See if you get a little better light on it. I'm not gonna bother taking it out. It's the standard 12 volt wall wart with a barrel connector on the end. Uh, Edge Router X. Now, this should be good for up to up to, not I wouldn't say including, but up to a gigabit connection from your ISP. There's been reports that this router can top out um, at 500 megabits uh, with a, with, on gigabit connections. 
to the ISP. Um, so a lot of people have been moving up to the next step, the Edge Router 4, which apparently can handle gigabit and higher uh, uh, WAN connections and lets you, it lets you run it at, at whatever speed, as high a speed as you're actually getting. I mean, few people get actual gigabit speeds from their ISP, but, you know, if you can get six or 700 megabits and you got a router limiting you to 500, well, yeah, you kind of need to do something. Uh, but for this one, this will be fine. I've got a sub 100 megabit connection, so this should be wonderful. Uh, and the thing is, with lower speed connections, things like buffer bloat and that become even more of an issue. Uh, just because you have limited bandwidth to start with, you don't need anything else hammering it. Um, and you can see what's shining there. Those of you got your activity lights, which is kind of nice because you've got a, a uh, you got wall mounted brackets built right into it. So you can basically hang this thing on the wall and then you can actually see what's going on instead of having to look down here and see if something's going on in the, on the ports. I hate it when they put activity lights on the ports. I love it when there's a separate um, connection, a separate row of lights there to be able to be seen. Anyway, that's what's in the box. Uh, what will be coming up is uh, uh, I'm going to do uh, some comparisons and some things like that and using this router. Uh, one with just the straight uh, C2100T uh, Technicolor DSL modem I have that's hooked up to my CenturyLink connection. Then I'll do the same suite of testing with uh, my, a router I tried that uh, an old router I used with my uh, when I had a Cox connection, a cable connection. Uh, that was a TP-Link RL860 uh, router that um, it actually, I tried it out to deal with this buffer bill problem. It helped a little bit, but it ended up dropping my line speeds down about 15%, uh, which wasn't very helpful. And it only marginally impacted the buffer bloat. My buffer bloat problem has gotten as bad as 500 milliseconds of delay. Um, that's not good, and that expects, uh, affects things like streaming, either up, streaming up to, say, YouTube or pulling down a movie, say, from, like, Netflix. So um, it's, an, it's an issue that I want to deal with and I want to fix. Um, to that end, I'll be doing different tests. Now, I tried the TP-Link, as I said. We'll try the C21T, and then we'll try this router, and we'll look at the numbers. Uh, and what I'll be using is I'll go up to DSL reports since they only have the only uh, true and uh, reliably uh, – uh, uh, reliably accurate test, testing that tests not only speeds but buffer bloat and look across, uh, you know, all three. But for now, that's the end of this video. That's uh, I just wanted to show you the unboxing, what you get for buying a, the uh, Ubiquiti uh, Edge Router X for 45 bucks. Um, oh, yeah, one other thing I should mention there's people, not only does the PoE thing seem to be an issue for people. Uh, apparently, this thing can run really hot, uh, which makes sense because it's a metal case, which just means it's basically one big heat sink. So we'll have to deal with that little issue, and I have a couple ideas about that. Um, but other than that, that's all we have to say about it. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon with uh, some upcoming tests and, and maybe even some configuration videos, things like that. We'll talk to you later. Bye.